Sherry Bosher reporting from the annual meeting of the American Psychiatric Association, which started with the launch of DSM-5, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, last revised in 1994. We are delighted to finally come to this day after 13 years of uh, development of the DSM-5. Uh, we've uh, been looking forward to the time when in fact we could reflect you know, all of the input that we asked for uh, from uh, all quarters of the scientific community and the public uh, through our announcements of draft criteria. Uh, we finally have the, uh, the product uh, that is the result of all of this interaction. The new DSM already has been the target of criticism. Some fear that it shifts the focus and resources away from severe disease toward milder illness. There's nothing in the diagnostic manual that will result in the diversion of resources. Uh, resource allocation is really a public policy issue that depends on how they're uh, allocated um, both in the private insurance uh, world and in the public um, uh, health and public mental health world. Uh, certainly, uh, care of the severely mentally ill has been grossly underfunded for decades. Uh, we don't expect that this will make a major difference uh, in that. What we do think is that uh, by having more uh, precise uh, understanding of the uh, deficits that are part of specific mental disorders, that it will help to focus treatment uh, more uh, you know, directly on those, that we will have really more of a measurement-based care that will be facilitated by some of the new tools that we're offering uh, clinicians in uh, Section 2. Uh, and I think now is the time that uh, the critics will actually be able to see whether or not their uh, pre-publication criticism was heard. Uh, we think it was. The DSM-5 includes a new third section with tools for clinicians and for the first time self-assessment tools for patients. Several new disorders are introduced but the total number of disorders remains approximately the same. We won't have to wait another 19 years for revisions because for the first time the DSM-5 is going digital. This is for two reasons. One, uh, to identify what the state of science is at this point in time and as the um, new research comes out, we will be able to update it specifically in areas uh, where the science is ready for a, for a significant update. So I think that's important. The other thing about the electronic version is that it will be linked to many other uh, resources uh, that the American Psychiatric Press has. It can link uh, to uh, textbooks of psychiatry, to um, uh, you know, books about uh, cognitive behavior therapy, uh, pharmacotherapy, uh, and the like. So it'll be uh, very much um, uh, more user-friendly. There will be an app for DSM-5 uh, for people to have in their pockets. Uh, so I think it's, it's going to come of age, so to speak, uh, to the electronic age. The DSM-5 is available now in print, and the digital version should be released later this year. Reporting for IMNG Medical Media, I'm Sherry Bosher.